Welcome back to the Shinhan mini series on this channel. This is episode four and we're going to be looking at all the lovely blues. First up we have the indigo and this indigo unfortunately it does suffer from shininess. I don't know if the camera can catch it. I know I say that every time but I'm never sure until I come to edit these videos. You can see shininess over here as well. Well I can. It is made with PB66, which is synthetic indigo. It's a beautiful colour that I love, love the hues about here. So pretty and you get a lot of texture out of them. I would say this is pretty granulating. It's gorgeous, gorgeous colour. I love how dark it gets, even though it is really shiny and not ideal. It does create good gradation and you don't get cauliflowering with it, which is lovely. It is classified as semi-opaque. I would say semi-transparent, although I do see quite... Di yeah, it's somewhere between semi-transparent and semi-opaque. It's quite difficult with something that's almost black because it's like black on almost black. So it's difficult. It is a staining colour. You get this almost synthetic blue stain happening here that you won't be able to get rid of. In terms of glazing, as you can see, it's pretty bad at glazing though. The outer outline area does get lifted very, very easily. However, love, love, love the colors that this mix creates it is super high tinting strengths i mean as i say they're all high in tinting strengths but this was super high in tinting stress it took me by surprise how strong the tinting strength was so you will definitely definitely need a high tinting strength palette like the one i have which i will link up here if you want to see what colors i have in them and if you have more of the low tinting strands, you definitely don't want this in your palette because it's going to take over every color you mix with it. But I love this green. It's very textural. And the same with the purple and this deep blue. Beautiful colors. Then we have the Prussian blue, which is made with PV27, which obviously is Prussian blue. Okay, suffer some shininess. Can you see that? I am trying. But if you can't see it, please trust me. I will never say a colour is shiny unless it is. Because, you know, I want everyone to enjoy as many colours as possible. So I'm not going to make up the fact like it's bad when it's not. Because I think like all paints have their uses great at gradation again i've just not had any problem with gradation in the shinhan range at all so far in the ones that i've tested in this format no cauliflowering either it's classified as transparent and i would agree with that it is heavily staining you get this blue and once you get it done it's not going to come back it's pretty bad at the glazing as well. I'm sure you can see the outline being lighter here, which is not ideal. And I don't know why, because it's transparent and it's heavily staining, but it's just, it lifts, a lot of these colours lift so easily. It is high tinting strength, so your mixes can be really high if you want it to. Obviously, with the high tinting mixes, you can add more water to create paler versions. But you can't do it the other way around of having low tinting strength colours and hope to end up with intense colours. So it's always best to start off as high tinting strengths as you can handle and then just water it down because that's going to give you more versatility than the low tinting strength ones. Then we have the cobalt blue and this is a lovely cobalt blue. I have to say it's a fresh sky blue. It's gorgeous. It doesn't have any leaning of like t being turquoise or anything. It is a very clear, refreshing blue. It is also very good for gradating. You get five stages and you don't get cauliflower. Well, you do it a little bit here, but it's not like the ones that you end up down here. So it, yeah, I would say it's okay for cauliflowering. It's 
classified as transparent and I would agree with that. It's semi-staining in that you're not gonna get it all the way back to white but it's also nowhere near staining as say the Prussian blue. The Prussian blue behaved a lot like a phthalo blue even though it is PV27. And with the glazing again not the greatest as you can see but cobalt blues tend to be not great at glazing anyway because they lift quite easily it's again for a cobalt color it's very high tinting strength because look at these mixes that you can get from it it's really intense really gorgeous love this color but definitely love this violet as well Next up, we have the Cerulean Blue Hue, which is made with PB15 colon 3. That is your Thalo Blue Green shade. It does unfortunately suffer from shininess again. I'll just wave it about and pray that it shows up. But if not, please believe me because I wouldn't say that otherwise. It's not Cerulean, but a lot of Cerulean Blue Hues. In fact, I think pretty much all of the Cerulean Blue Hues are Thalo Blues. So just assume that this is Thalo Blue and then we can get on with it. Whereas if you assume any of the Cerulean Blue hues as being anything similar to Cerulean Blue, you're going to have a shock in any brand. So assume this is a Thalo Blue colour. Great water control, great gradation. This was really easy to do, no cauliflowering, really great. It's your standard thalo blue green shade or yellow shade if you're a Holbein fan. Um, there's no deviation. It's very, very strong colour though. It is transparent and it normally is. So it's classified as transparent and it is. It's heavily staining as you would expect in a thalo blue colour rather than a cerulean blue. Cerulean blues don't tend to be this, this staining. So yeah. There's a lot of issues with brands creating hues that are nothing like the colour that it's trying to recreate in terms of characteristics and hue. Weirdly, not the best at glazer. Thalo Blues tend to be really good at glazing, but not this one. So I would say in general that Shinhan, if you do a lot of glazes, maybe avoid. But if you do a lot of single layers, awesome super high tinting strength again it just creates the most intense color mixes because it's a Thalo blue then we have weirdly a color called peacock blue which is also pb15 colon 3 and i'm like why do we have two Thalo blue green shades why not have Thalo blue green shade and red shade perhaps but no they went for two very similar colors and I mean, it's a nice color. It's slightly more yellowish, but like you probably could produce this color from watering this color down. It's very, very similar. It does suffer from a tiny bit of shine, but nowhere near as bad as the other colors. Great at gradation, no cauliflowering, which is great because normally thalos, they are quite prone to cauliflowering. So if you do a lot of water work and if you do a lot of gradation with your thalos, this might be a good option. It's classified as transparent. However, I did see some deposit over the line that was like quite opaque. So I'm going to classify it as semi-transparent. It is semi-staining, not super high, sta high like this one. I would argue that this is very slightly less staining. However, it's terrible, terrible at the glazing. Look at that glaze. It's not good. The thing with this blue that's different from the cerulean blue hue is that it's surprisingly lower tinting strength compared to any basically most thalo blues that you you know you try in general. So you can see the mixes in some of the colors like with the cerulean and with the thalo blue yellow shade. It's a lot lighter color mixes. So if a Thalo Blue intimidates you and you want a lower tinting strength one, then a Peacock Blue by Shinha might be a great place to start you off on getting used to mixing with a Thalo Blue. 
and then finally for this video we have the ultramarine deep and this is a really nice bright bright ultramarine blue which is really nice because some ultramarine blues are just sad whereas this is very intense very very intense and obviously heavily granulating really good gradation and no color flowering it's classified as transparent but again i can see some blue deposits on top so i'm going to classify it as semi-transparent it's completely non-staining you can lift this very easily it's it's great um but it's not good at the glazing however for a sailor blue i mean i would argue that this is definitely worse which i don't understand it is high tinting strength for ultramarine color so it puts up a really good fight with these really intense colors creating great granulating color mixes so that's all the colors that we looked at in this video quite a lot of shining happening three of them definitely shines and one of them is slightly shiny i don't understand why we have two thalo blue yellow shades that are really similar like this this uh, these two are quite similar and these two are quite similar so i would have loved to have had a thalo blue red shade in there so that you can have a non-granulating version of the ultramarine kind of color happening that would make this a little bit more versatile i would think than having two very similar thalo blue green shades in the next episode we're going to be covering all the neutral colors that come in this set so do look forward to that and until then thank you so much for watching this video do let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite as always links down below for where you can get these paints and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!